Pleased to be joined on another Warriors Wednesday with former Warrior forward and national champion, now turned pro hockey player, uh, Michael Lombardi. And Mike, first off, thanks for taking the time today to join us. And uh, how's the summer been treating you? I know it uh, looks like you got a little bit of a tan going, so obviously staying out in the sun and uh, out in Massachusetts, uh, always uh, pretty decent weather out there uh, throughout the course of the summer. So how's the summer been treating you so far? It's been uh, it's been great, you know, trying to uh, get as much work in as possible, but also, you know, kind of enjoy yourself, go to the beach, golf whenever you can. And uh, it, it's been pretty fun so far. So I wanted to ask you about your time in West Kelowna. And, uh, you know, it's been a while since you and me have chatted. We were together on that team uh, way back in 2016-17, but uh, a long time ago. But uh, obviously that can happen so quickly that it feels like it wasn't that long ago. Uh, do you still kind of catch yourself remembering times from when you were playing back in junior in Westgate? Yeah, absolutely. I actually keep in touch with a lot of those guys who are on that team. Like I was just talking to Jerry Marino this morning. And uh, we we're just kind of sharing some memories. And obviously, uh, I ran in last year. I actually got to run into my uh, roommate, Bennett Norland, and Willie Ryan was there too. They were at the same hotel as us, Air Force was playing down in the Boston area. So it was nice to just kind of see those guys and, and reconnect with them because we, you know, obviously throughout the season, you spend a lot of time together and you create really, you know, deep friendships. And it was, uh, it's always nice to reconnect with those guys. Yeah, and for yourself, uh, you know, you played, I think it was a couple of games with Chilliwack, and then you get traded to West Kelowna, and have a great year with West Kelowna in your first year. You know, it just it really seemed like things had blossomed for you with the Warriors, and uh, obviously fell a little bit shorter than where uh, the, the Warriors wanted to in the playoffs. But, you know, when you think back to that year in uh, West Kelowna, what's one of the biggest takeaways for you? Was it just having that camaraderie and the guys that you met? Yeah, uh, obviously uh, we fell a little short there, but I felt like I learned a lot. Obviously playing for Ryland was great and, you know, learning from guys like Jerry Marino and, you know, we had just such a deep team and such a close team. And, uh, you know, I felt like obviously the brotherhood from there was something I took with me and, uh, you know, the culture that we were trying to build there. And, you know, a lot of those memories, you know, down the road were were good learning moments for me. And you go from uh, West Kelowna and make your way to Quinnipiac. And it, obviously throughout the course of your five years there, it was a different time just with COVID being a thing. You were right in the middle of it, obviously, with that happening right uh, in your tenure uh, while you were in while you were at Quinnipiac. But uh, what was the, the first little bit of your career like? Got into a lot of games your first year and uh, seemed to be a continuing trend as uh, your career pro progressed at Quinnipiac. So what was your time like with the Bobcats uh, through five years? Obviously culminating, and we'll get to this in a little bit, with the national championship last year. But uh, kind of summarize, if you can, a little bit of your five years at Quinnipiac. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a pretty unique experience. I mean, it was the best five years of my life. I was lucky to be a part of, you know, five years, obviously, with the COVID year. Five great teams. And, you know, we had great leadership and a lot of guys who, who really taught me a lot of things. And it was... Uh, it was a really special experience. I, I loved it. Obviously, your freshman year, you come in, you don't really know what to expect, and you're basically thrown right into the fire, you know. And um, at a program like that, you're, you know, a lot's demanded of you. And I think that was good for me personally to learn that and, uh, you know, start to learn habits that, you know, you can take and, and develop your game a little bit. And uh, I, I just can't even uh, believe that, you know, it, it ended a national championship because it's, and the first four years, you come up a little bit short and you know how good those teams are and you really have to get a bounce and get lucky. And, uh, you know, everything really needs to come together to win a championship. And uh, it really did this year, which was nice. But my first uh, first few years there were absolutely special. Uh, you know, you get the bond with your with your teammates, you know, you're living in the dorm and things like that. It, it was uh, it was an absolute blast. And it must be such a, almost a Cinderella ending for you, you know, as a five-year guy, find your way to a national championship, your final game you ever play in college hockey is winning a national championship. There's not many guys that can say that they have that to finish their college career. So 
I can only imagine how good of a feeling that must have been for you and uh, all of your teammates. You know, we talked to Charles Alexis Legault about two months ago about the feeling that he had. He said kind of blacked out. It was indescribable. What was your feeling like when you heard the final buzzer go and, uh, and obviously the overtime winner and the big finish for the national championship for Quinnipiac? To be honest with you, it was a lot of relief. I mean, we had for five years, That's that's been our goal, right? So everything we did was working towards that. And, you know, we have such a deep alumni pool of guys who have been there and I've had the opportunity to go to frozen fours and they've come up a little short. So there was a lot of weight on our shoulders and, and finally getting that done for our alumni group, our, our university. And uh, just the, the feeling when that puck went in the net is it was indescribable, you know, to really see uh, just the guys getting off the bench and throwing the gloves up in the air. It was uh you really do almost black out like Charlie said, but it was just a little bit sweeter because we had that five years of, of hard work invested in it. And it was, uh, it was the best feeling of my life that day. It was still, it was, it was just unbelievable. It hasn't really sunk in yet fully. Obviously I think down the line we'll be able to look back and realize how special of a time that was, but it was, uh, it was everything you could have dreamed of. For yourself, uh, you, you mentioned, you know, through your five-year career, just how memorable that was at Quinnipiac and, Throughout the course of time, the Bobcats have always been a program that have heavily recruited out of the BC Hockey League. And I, I think it was something like 13 or 14 players that were from the BCHL that were on that team last year. So do you kind of just feel an initial closeness with some of those guys that come in? Even, you know, we talked about Legault, but obviously a lot of different guys. Jacob Quillen scored a lot of big goals. He played at Penticton uh, the last couple of years. And then obviously, uh, you know, was able to come in and make an immediate impact with Quinnipiac. Do you feel just an immediate bond with those guys just because they came from the same league? Yeah, I, I think you do. Absolutely. Because you get to play against those guys and, you know, kind of chat on the road. Obviously, when you're committed somewhere, you know who the other guys are who are going to be coming into your class. And I think I had maybe five or six guys in my freshman class out of 12 that came from the BC league. So we had, we had some familiarity with each other. And I think that that definitely helped. I mean, uh, out of our fifth year group, I think every single guy played in the BCHL at some point, which is, which is pretty impressive. Desi Burgart was in Surrey. Ethan DeYoung was in Prince George. TJ Friedman was in Victoria. And then Zach Metz was in uh, Merritt. So out of the five guys who came back for the fifth year, it's it's kind of funny that everybody did actually play in the BC League. How easy of a decision was it for you to come back for your fifth year? Because I know a lot of guys, obviously, you know, you're weighing options. If you want to go play pro hockey, if you want to do this, want to do that. Was it an easy decision for you that you felt that that group was in the right place, that you knew that they were going to go far? Obviously, you know, after that, uh, after my senior year, you're weighing, like you said, decisions on, trying to move to pro and whatnot. But I think we sat down as a group and we really had some unfinished business. And, you know, our goal was to to try to hang a banner and, and win a national championship for the school that had given us basically everything we could have ever asked for. So I think that had a lot to do with it. And once we sat down and had that conversation, it was an absolute easy decision. And, you know, we're we're extremely lucky to get that fifth year. I mean, I know a lot of players don't get the opportunity to do that. And you know, we took full advantage of it. That's for sure. So on to new endeavors, and uh, you were able to get in to your first couple games of pro hockey last year, uh, signing an amateur trial with uh, the Tucson Roadrunners of the American Hockey League. Uh, what kind of an adjustment was that to go from college? And you go from the ultimate high of winning a national championship to now you're just thrown into the late season of the American Hockey League playing against guys who are, you know, in their 30s and in their uh, late 20s. So a lot of nervousness, I can only imagine for yourself and obviously going out to Tucson, going to Arizona, a different part of the country for you as well. Take me through that whole decision process and kind of the feelings that you had leading up to your first game. Yeah, it was a, it was an absolute roller coaster. It was actually uh, it was kind of fun. I was just riding, obviously, like you said, the high of winning the national championship. And then, you know, three days later, I'm on a plane headed to Arizona. And uh, it was a uh, it was a great experience. I had a great time there. I learned a lot. I was there for uh, just under three weeks. So we uh, we had a road trip and everything like that. So it was uh, it was a lot to take in at first. Obviously, it's a complete different lifestyle and a different style of hockey than colleges right I was so comfortable at Quinnipiac I had played five years there I knew what the routine was 
I knew, you know, what each day to day was going to be and to move on to, uh, to playing in Tucson. And, and I really had no idea what, what to expect. And, but I had some great guys there who took care of me. A lot of the veterans were, were awesome and, and showing me around and, and really making sure that I was caught up to speed quick. And, uh, I was lucky enough to get in a game there and uh, do pretty well, which was which was great for me individually and uh, gave me the confidence going into the summer that, you know, I can play in that league and, and play well. Do pretty well. Yeah, you scored your first AHL goal in your first game. Uh, in that one, do you have this, do you still have the puck with you or what, what memory do you have carrying with you with that? I was lucky enough. I got uh, the jersey and the puck. So I, I have a nice collection of jerseys. So I I'd like to to keep on to them. So I, I definitely made sure I got the puck. <laughs> yeah. So you're coming off of that. And uh, just a few weeks ago, you participated in the Arizona Coyotes development camp as well. Uh, it must have been a good experience. You know, you get an opportunity against some younger guys, uh, some guys that maybe are still in junior, just going from junior uh, to college. But take me through that experience and what that looked like for you to uh, be a part of the development camp for the Coyotes for the week. Yeah, it was great. Uh, it was great to get out there and, and kind of, I hadn't really met um, all the staff and all the development guys. And, and it was great to get out there and, and get some extra work in. Obviously, uh, I'm a little older than a lot of guys that were in development camp, but it was still uh, it was a great experience. I took a lot from it and uh, it gave me a little bit of a couple of things to work on to get ready for the season and um, hopefully make a good impression at camp. And coming up, that is what the plan is. Take me through what that's going to look like for you over the next couple of months and what the next steps are for you. Now, after college, you don't have to worry about school anymore. Uh, you know, you're just a full-time hockey player. Is that what it's going to look like for you over the course of the next little bit? What's uh, what's the horizon like for you? Yeah, I think I think so. It's nice to take a little break from school. I you know I was in uh, college for five years, so to take a little break from uh, in the books would be great and just kind of focus on hockey and getting better and trying to develop my game. So we'll see uh, what the future holds. I'm excited for it. Obviously a new experience and uh, you know, I don't really know what to expect, but we'll, we'll figure it out as we go. And lastly for you, uh, I ask a lot of different guys just, you know, it seems like when you're playing junior, you're almost waiting for junior to be over to go to college and you're waiting for college to be over to go and play pro. But when you look back on it, you just kind of wish that those experiences weren't rushed through. And I, I think a lot of fans kind of wonder too, after you're done playing here and after you've been away now for about six or seven years, it's still something that's in your mind and it's still something that, you know, maybe one day you do come back to West Kelowna, whether it's a vacation, whether it's somebody you mentioned, you mentioned Jared Marino, he's coming back for a wedding. Like, it's just one of those things that it seems like now this community kind of has a place in you. Yeah. I, I mean, it's definitely a, a huge part of my development, right? Like I was lucky enough, my, in my billet there, Randy Benson, who is, you know, world-class guy, really genuinely nice person. He kind of showed us the area and, I think that I will definitely be back. I mean, obviously, I, I still talk to a lot of the guys that I that I played junior with. And, uh, you know, looking back on it, you just – we still laugh to this day. Like, I had a phone call with Jared this morning. We were just talking about, like, the old experiences and, you know, different things, different stories. And, uh, you know, I, I would definitely love to get back at some point and, you know, see the new facility. Obviously, the new ownership group has done a great job at taking care of the players and uh, – you know, I think that's exciting. Like I, I still keep up. I still follow on Twitter, on Instagram and and check up on the scores and things like that, because the team is a big part of me. I mean, it, without going to West Kelowna, I don't think I would have had the career that I would have had um, at Quinnipiac and obviously moving forward. So I think uh, it's definitely a big piece of me and I would actually like to get back soon. Definitely in the summertime, too, though. <laughs> yeah yeah that's the best time to come out here is uh i think you know that from even just being here for a year i think you know that the summertime would be the best time to make right. your way back right absolutely well we appreciate you taking the time thanks so much for this mike it was great to hear from you obviously a best of luck with your new endeavors and going into pro hockey and i'm sure we'll be chatting pretty soon as well so appreciate your time today thank you absolutely thanks for having me go warriors